Oh, oh, hello. I, I didn't see you there. I'm so sorry. I was just reading through my module to chapter three before this video. And uh, I hope that you guys are ready for this too. If you haven't read through it, I highly recommend it. I, I see all of my awesome highlightings from when I was 12. And oh boy, how exciting this is. Today, we will be talking about airport aeronautical charts and a little bit about how maps work. So let's go ahead and get into it. Today's video is going to be a little bit shorter than the previous video and the video before that, but that's primarily because this section is relatively short and we want to make sure that we're still covering this material in depth despite not having too much to read through. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is latitude versus longitude. Longitude is the meridians or the vertical lines and latitude is the parallel flat lines. So I always think of it as latitude, flatitude, longitude. I don't have one for longitude, but I always think lat, flat, and then I remember longitude is the other direction if I'm getting confused between the two. So basically a sectional chart is just a map that people in aviation use. And it's based off of the Lambert conformal conic projection, which talks about latitude and longitude. So the United States is divided into a bunch of different parts, which are called sections, which is why there's one sectional chart per section. And that sectional chart has information about like the highest point on the area, like above ground level, just to make sure that you don't run into it. Um, it shows power lines, visual landmarks, cities, what information you might need to know about restricted airspace or the different types of airspace around towered or untowered airports. And it's really important to understand each of the components within it. However, you may not be able to remember everything. There are a lot of different symbols and I will include the list right here. This is what the legend looks like. And you can see there's a lot of information on it. And by understanding the basic principles of everything, like what different classes of airspace mean, or like a star above the little airport, then we can be better prepared when we are planning for our flight using sectional charts. And then when we are flying, we are prepared. I'm not going to be going into a ton of detail about the legend because if you are studying to be a private pilot, you definitely should know what each of these symbols mean, or at least familiar enough that you're like, ah, yes, I can determine that this is a power line and this is a cell tower, and then be able to determine how high you need to fly to go over and avoid those obstacles. Remember, the controlled airports are blue and the uncontrolled airports are magenta. And in the, in the legend, it does say that, but that is something that the book really wants you to know. If you are interested in doing air crew, you do have to be over 18 years old. You can be a cadet or a senior member. And I think it's a great opportunity to get into aviation if you're interested in flying, but without the component of actually getting your private pilot's license. If you are going for those qualifications, you do need to be familiar with the sectional chart and then figuring out how to read a heading and determine how far away different locations are from each other using this little measurement tool. And in general, you will have a knowledgeable pilot who can walk you through the steps of flight planning and how to prepare. So that does it for module two. Guys, we did it. We finished module two. And if you do have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I appreciate your guys' support. Thank you so much for being awesome. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks until next time. Toodles.